Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the first uh, six weeks of my accountancy training, they actually, the, the boss man made me add up the client's books to make sure that the client was adding them up correctly. Can you believe that? But I tell you what, I'll challenge any of you, give me a row of figures and I bet I can add them up accurately uh, and quicker than most other people. So that's my 36 years. And then since the 1st of June in the year 2000, all I've been doing is this. So I've been doing it for 20 years, one month and eight days. I've been going all over the UK, in fact, all over Europe. So I've been traveling, traveling, traveling. So for the last three months, life is completely different. And I'm getting used to it and I'm starting to do some presentations like this and I do hope you enjoy it. It's never the same as being in the same room, but until we're unlocked from uh, what we're being locked into, there's nothing we can do. Think about this. Every relationship is simply about communicating. So from the very start until now, the only way right at the beginning, the only way we could communicate is when we were in the same room. There was no technical uh, ability to do anything else other than be in the same room. And then about 160 years ago, some fella called Alexander Graham Bell produced the telephone. So then we were able to be on the phone, talk to people, and we uh, didn't need to be in the same room. And then, of course, of roughly 20 years ago, that has built up. We're, we're doing it virtually, as we're doing it today. Emails. And, and my big mantra has always been more talk, less type. And I hope you'll agree with me that when it comes to communication, the best way is to talk to people. You know this phrase, social distancing? Well, think about it. It's an absolute nonsense, in my opinion. What they should have been telling us from day one is we have to be physically distancing. That's what they were saying, two meters, now one meter or somewhere in the middle. But no, they used it social distancing. Well, of course, if we socially distance, we can't communicate. And if we can't communicate, then I think it's going back to prehistoric man or woman where people just go, uh, 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 uh. So that's one of my uh, many frustrations in the last three or four months that they've actually used the wrong phrase. So in the chat box, let's start. We're talking about networking. Will you all please type in a phrase what you think networking is? And I'm going to shut up for a second. In fact, I'm just going to get a glass of water. So, Mike, keep an eye on uh, what people are saying. What is And the answer mics are, what have we got in the chat box? We've got building credibility and contacts, relationship building, meeting new people, meet, making contacts, um, learn about their business, learn how you could help them and also promote your business at the same time. Bullseye, Great. Great. ladies and gentlemen. The irony about networking is whether you like it, whether you hate it, and whether you're indifferent to it, me, you, and everybody in the world, we all network from the age of two. In my opinion, and I've already alluded to it, networking is just building relationships or take it down to its absolute basics. It's just talking to people, simple as that. And until three months ago, most networking was done like that. However, the kids of today, as a lot of you have got kids and grandkids perhaps, 
they think that networking, the best way to do it, or the only way to do it, is like that. Well, I am trying my hardest with my grandchildren to explain to them talking is best. And, of course, the way we're all doing our networking now is that. Please let us get back to the real thing in due course. Now, so networking is building relationships, talking to people, and all those comments you've made. Thank you. The three key steps to building any relationship, whether it's a personal relationship, or uh, sorry, whether it's a social relationship, or whether it is a business relationship, has got to have three key steps. The first step in the building relationships is to get to know people. Every relationship has to start somewhere. Sometimes it starts with a LinkedIn invitation. Sometimes it starts with a phone call. And when we get back to face-to-face, -face, it's, hello, can I introduce myself? This next word for me is the most important word when it comes to relationship building. Because when people don't like us, they don't want to deal with us, they don't want to see us, they don't want to help us, they don't want to introduce us to anybody. So for me, getting people to like us is the key to the whole subject that I talk about. And the third step in building relationships is trust. Know, like, and trust. And you think about any relationship that you value, it has to go through those steps. And if they're not there, those steps, then there's either an artificial relationship or there's no relationship whatsoever. Now, when it comes to relationships, this is a very strong piece of advice that I've been advocating since lockdown. I think it's really hard to build relationships without meeting people. So the strongest advice I'm giving to you and other people I speak to is to rekindle past connections. Go back through your little black book. Go back through the clients you've lost, unless you had a personal fallout with them. If it was a business, for whatever reason, uh, a business change, go back to them. If you put proposals into people and they've said no or they ignore you, go back to them. The world is different today. Go through your level one connections on LinkedIn. Think, oh, I've not spoken to Jack. I must get in touch with Jill. Just see how they're getting on and do it by phone. Phone them up or use the WhatsApp video, something like that. And so bear that in mind. And it's all about strong relationships, everybody. And that's why I want you to reinforce and re-energize and rekindle past connections you've i think most of you or i know i have because i don't travel i've got the i i work out now the hundreds and thousands of hours on trains and planes and cars well i haven't got them at the moment so i've got time to rekindle past connections and i think you probably have as well i'm not even going to ask you i'm, I'm just assuming that all of you are on linkedin and a quick, re a quick recap of LinkedIn. That's you. You connect with people. They are your level one contacts. If those level one contacts of yours keep their network open, you can then see who their level two contacts are. So if you do want to start to build new relationships, can I strongly recommend that you you don't go directly to them. You ask the people you know, your level one contacts, to introduce you to the people that they know. That has to be the better way of doing it rather than going cold to new contacts. And I have a template, and if any, I'm going to keep offering you loads of things. I'm, I'm going to be sending you stuff at the end, but. Through the uh, workshop today, I'm going to say, if you want this, just write to me. I've got my big email at the end. I have a template which tells, which you can send to your level one contacts for them to send across to their contacts. So if you want a copy of that, please ask me. 
Okay, so if you all agree with me that one of the most, well, not one of the, the most important way of getting people to build relationships with us is getting people to like us, will you please write in the chat box the answer to that question? Mike, is my sound okay or am I too yep. loud? No, your sound's fine. Thank you. Have we got some answers coming through? Yes, we have. Share them with us all. So uh, you uh, have to be authentic. You have to be good company. You've got to be real. Um, you've got to, don't talk about yourself. Uh, be interested in other people. Um, listen to what they have to say and be interested in them. Be genuine. Smile. Listen, interact, but be yourself. Be reliable. Be yourself. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, bullseye again. I say this, that networking, i.e. relationship building, is nothing to do with business. You look at all those comments you've made, it's all about getting people to like us. And at the end of the day, business will only happen when you have a product or service you meet somebody who has a need for that product or service and they decide they like you. So I hate this cliche, but I'm sure you'll all agree with me. At the end of the day, people buy people before they buy the product or service. And that is what it's all about. When I'm working with lots of young professional people, I say, I'm sure you're very clever. I'm sure you've got lots of degrees behind your name. But at the end of the day, if people can't get on with you and you can't build rapport with them, the chances of great success is pretty small. I have to tell you, everybody, honestly, uh, and I say this to you, Mike, I might never have said it to you. Technically, I was never a good accountant. I wasn't very clever. I got thrown out of school at 16. I was told, Kintish, go and get a job. You're not clever enough for university. And that's the headmaster said, go and be an accountant. You're quite good at maths. And that was the career advice I was given. But I did incredibly well, as you said in your intro. I was brilliant at picking up clients. People liked me and people trusted me. And when it got hard, technically hard, I had a load of partners who were very good technicians, but couldn't get a client to save their lives. So what I was able to do was bring the business in, keep an eye on it, but when it came to hard technical stuff, I had to give it to other people. So thank you for your answers there. And these are the te top 10 premier ones that I've come up with. And I'm gonna shut up and just click through the slides. Somebody said show interest. Please everybody, don't forget the keyword genuine interest. We heard from you. We, we've had that one. Every relationship has to start somewhere. So remember, create a great first impression. That's a biggie, which I'll share with you in a second. When you go to an event, watch your body language. Don't do that. Don't put your hands in your pocket. Don't stand with your hands in front of you as if you're a bodyguard. My best advice to you when it comes to body language standing at an event is to always have a drink in your hand and that way you can't do any of the negative body language that I see people do. Thank you for that. Authentic, act natural, be yourself. We've heard from you there as well. Now, I'm from the north. You lot are from the south. I might have to translate here. The word nout means nothing. So... Uh, Hopefully, uh, I've now introduced you some northern lingo. For me, the first principle of networking is that. Always to be thinking about other people. And what you have here on the screen are some questions that you might want to be thinking about when you meet people. I'm not going to read them. And the bottom bit where it says offer specific help. So rather than saying to perhaps a client, um, 
Oh, if ever you think I can help you with anything, let me know. Say, would you like me to run a little session on X? Or would you like me to give you some advice about a particular area of my expertise? Try and be specific when you're offering help to people. And when, you, when we go back networking or even joining this club at all, ask these questions. If somebody says, I need some help, does anybody know anybody at? That third one down there, I know somebody who can help you at and make sure that you fulfill your commitment when you promise to help somebody. Now, let's not be uncommercial. Let's now talk about helping ourselves. There are four key areas there. Most of my in-house workshops is with bigger companies and getting into bigger companies, I work in universities and business schools, big professional services firms and it, often it's hard to get in because I don't do cold calling but if I meet somebody I will use these questions at the bottom please can you give me some advice about and learn this one everybody this is the flattering phrase if you were me how would you go about and when people know you when people like you and when people trust you and you ask them for help, I believe that 99% of the time, if they can help you, they will help you. And you think about this. If, if you help somebody, you know how you feel, don't you? You feel good inside. So I often think I'm going to help you because it's going to make me feel good. So don't hold back. Don't be hesitant about asking other people for help. Life's very, very difficult. So if you ask people for help, what are you doing? You're doing them a favor because you're making them feel good. Every relationship has to start somewhere. This is my acronym. Some of it is not relevant at the moment, but let me whip through it very quickly. The A stands for appearance. And even when, if, if you are meeting people on screen, then please make sure that you are dressed appropriately. I've got a pair of trousers on today. I've been in my pajamas for three months, but I thought in case the camera sort of drops, you don't want to see my pajamas. So I even put a pair of shoes on. Uh, I'm glad to say they still fit me. Of course, the S stands for fire, smile. The H is a good handshake. You'll all remember what that is. Introduce yourself. I'll come back to that in a moment. Name. Most of you, oh, in the chat box, will you put whether you're good at remembering names when you go to an event? Just put yes or no. What have we got here, Michael? Um, mainly no's. Mainly no's. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to remembering names, it's nothing to do with your memory. It's all to do with your listening. Somebody introduces themselves at an event and you hear them say, oh, my name's... And you're too embarrassed to ask them. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I was able to get out of accountancy, and Mike mentioned this in the beginning, was when I went on a management course run by an organization called Dale Carnegie. He was a very, very clever man. He wrote the famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And one of his timeless quotes was as follows. A person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So can I strongly recommend that when you go to events or even online and you want to meet, I mean, it's dead easy now. Everybody's names underneath our, our um picture so it's dead easy at the moment but once we go back to meeting people if you don't hear their name ask them to repeat it they're never going to say to you hey i've told you once i'm not going to tell you again and if they do they're a weirdo so it's probably time for exit left at that point anyway so let me take you back to introducing yourself whenever we go to an event we're always asked what's your name and what do you do so their name is important to them and your name is important for you. So think about introducing yourself like this. Rather than saying, my name is Will Kintish, I introduce myself. Hello, everybody. My name is Will. Pause. 
Will Kintish. I don't actually say pause, I just pause. So think about that. I know you're all thinking about Bond, James Bond, but no, it's the other way around. My name is Mike, Mike Ogilvy. And that way people might just pick up your first name. And then they ask you, what do you do? Will you please answer with a verb and not a noun? Don't say I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, I'm an accountant, I'm a lawyer, I'm a... That's a noun. Tell people what you do. They never ask you what you are, they ask you what you do. Say, and, and try and find out what they do first. So if I meet an accountant and he or she says to me, so what do you do, Will? I say, I help professional people like you develop your networking skills. So when people ask you what you do, please try and answer in one sentence with a verb which makes them ask the next question. So that's introducing yourself. Name, change your name, the way you introduce yourself and change the way you answer the question, what do you do? We talked about name and finally, of course, eye contact. I'm doing my best here, everybody, to look at you in the camera. It's not easy because I keep looking down at the slide, if possible, always be looking into the camera when you are obviously face to face and of course um, in the camera. But we can't do any of that at the moment. So we have to be film stars. So I hope I'm projecting with energy. I'm standing up. Uh, I did my first uh, uh, early presentation sitting down and it was so uncomfortable. I've been doing standing up, <coughs> excuse me, I've been standing up for 20 years. So this of course makes it more natural uh, doing it this way. Uh, avoid distraction. I've had to ask Mrs. Kintish to turn the dryer off. The dryer is next door. And uh, if the dryer had been on, you'd have all heard it going clink, clink, clunk, clink. I don't know why dryers make such a noise. I have a studio light here and I've got some lighting over here. And the other thing, which I don't think I put on here, and, and uh, Mike says you can all hear me. For those of you who are uh, follically challenged like me, I'm gonna tell you now, I actually put makeup on. Just, just uh, I don't know what it's called, foundation, uh, just to dub down the uh, spotlight on my hair. So. Remember this, you've got to look as good, sound as good in the camera as you are face to face. Know, like and trust. At the end of the day, if I did an exercise with you, I'd say, how do we build trust? You'll all give me many answers, all of which will be correct. However, for me, that that you're looking at on the screen there is the one. It's about being totally reliable. I used to have in my office when I was an accountant and in latter years when I ran an office with staff in this job I'm in, I had two big signs on the wall. So many people over promise and under deliver. Oh yes, I'll get you that. I'll send you that. I'll introduce you to so-and-so, and they never do it. And if you've got children, please teach them that the major part of their career success is going to be about fulfilling their commitments, about being reliable, always doing what they say they're gonna do and do it in the timely fashion. Speed stuns. Learn this, everybody. At the end of this, I'm going to promise to send you a load of extra stuff. I will send it to you before lunchtime. I haven't got another meeting on today, so I'm going to send you a copy of the slides and other things as well. I will fulfill my commitment. And again, I'm not proud of this, but I wasn't technically a great accountant. But when a client said to me, Will, when can I have those accounts to show the bank because I need more finance? I discuss it with my team first, go back to the client and say, you can have it next Thursday. And you know what I'd do? Get the accounts to the clients on Wednesday. That made me a brilliant accountant. If I got them to them on Friday, I was a rubbish accountant. 
they didn't know whether the books balanced wasn't sure I did either sometimes um, but they uh, knew I'm a great accountant you can have them Thursday they got them Wednesday it's a bit like Amazon have you noticed this in the early part of this uh, new world we'll call it turbulent times Amazon were promising promising us things for six in six weeks and they came in about two weeks and you were oh that's good isn't it so always over deliver and under promise manage expectations now look at this everybody many years ago somebody said i said to somebody i'm bragging to them i said i've got a process for networking and they said what is it and i have to make it up on the spot so let me go through it with my very very sexy clicker when we accept an invitation we meet people we start to build relationships which gives us license to ask questions that is the number one core skill of good networkers we might spot whether they have a need for our services we call it the aha moment the light bulb moment every conversation ought to have a light bulb moment i hope ladies and gentlemen today you're having a few light bulb moments and if you do spot an opportunity in the good old days i then want you to follow up with a phone call and then go and meet the prospects we we can still do most of that today uh, if you meet somebody online in, in a group situation arrange to have a one-to-one -one with them perhaps we can't meet them but we can have a second or third meeting on zoom so that's my process so what is this aha moment well Whenever you're talking to people at an event or maybe in groups like this, we would all like them to say that. And when you hear that, that is the aha moment. For me, aha moments are when I get some very useful information. An aha moment is if somebody asks me for help and I go, aha, I can help you with that. So it's not just about getting new business, often it's just about gaining new information that's my aha moment okay it's 25 to 10 so we take a very quick coffee break everybody uh, i'm going to stay on here uh, i'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute um is that all right mike yes it's fine all right i'm going to start in exactly seven minutes i'm putting my timer on so go and have a wee or go and have a cup of coffee or tea or gin and tonic, whatever you drink. Uh, any questions, anybody? Anybody want to talk to me? Are they all still there, Mike? They're all still here, Will. They haven't left you. They're all, they're all, they've all gone for a cup of tea. Oh, where else? Okay. That's good. Okay. What's the what's the scenario for walking sometimes? Uh, yeah, that's hey, Chris, are you having problems with your uh, your internet signal? Oh, okay. Should we go out this afternoon? Or not? Yeah, thanks. Should we go to see you tomorrow? You have to unmute yourself, Chris. Oh, cool. Right. Uh, yeah, sorry about all this. Uh, if I get more than about five people on, then my uh, yeah, coffee. Okay. It's living out in the sticks. <laughs> How are you, anyway? Very, very well indeed. Good. Is, is business going well? Um, business uh, is frantic I was, it's, it's I think working from home I don't know what everybody else thinks I find it more intense than working um, in the office because I suppose I'm lucky working with Pippa I would I could say oh look can you can you just deal with that can you can you help me with this whereas when you're on your own you, you I keep building lists and lists and lists of things and uh, I find I'm, I'm sort of working till uh, into well into the evening just uh, catching up with stuff because you're getting phone calls and everything there's just uh, waves and waves of uh, um, requests whatever so it's uh, I'm 
it's an interesting time. So you, it's uh, every, life is all about prioritizing, but uh, I'm finding it uh, in, in, in your desire to please, um, it's, uh, you just just take on because you haven't you're having to deal with it yourself because you haven't you can't go to the team downstairs and say well can you do that can you help me with this can you call so and so you do you end up doing it yourself how about you mike yes uh when we're going to this next session can you record it please it's all recording at the moment oh oh right I'd like to see how I look. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the shine is not the shine is not coming off the barnet. It's all right. Are people there in front of you? I can't see anybody. Yes, they, they are. Uh, for those of you who can hear me, will you please type in the chat box the one thing you found useful so far, if anything, some or something that you thought, oh, I've forgotten that. I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore. Please, just one thing, you might have taken some notes. What have you learned so far? Any answers, Mike? Yeah, re Lara's covered, I think is a really important one, reconnecting with LinkedIn contacts. Uh, Thank I you, think, Lara. I, I certainly think that's uh, very important. And Neil's saying is over deliver and under promise. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge one for us in, in terms of, you know, when, when are we going to fit windows? When are you going to be on site? Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so crucial to, to our success is to, to do what we say we're going to do. Absolutely. Are you, are you IT support people, Neil? No, we're construction industry. Ah. Uh, Proper windows. Yeah. It's, there's, there's so many unknowns and uncertainties. I mean, in normal times in your business, isn't there? Every, everybody's totally reliant on everybody else. I can understand why there's so much uh, unreliability. I did an interview with Lara a few weeks ago on LinkedIn and uh, it's that, uh, that just got us thinking because you know, you, I always think when you start talking about it, you open the filing cabinets in your head and uh, you just, you just realize how powerful uh, LinkedIn is. And uh, so, of course, now um, the, the whole question, and we've been talking about video for so long, but the whole question of video is so important. I've just discovered a new app called Cloud App um, that you literally can be talking, talking to the screen and you can just cut and paste, just, just go straight in. It automatically goes to your clipboard, uh, clip it into your uh, email, and it goes straight there to people and say, um, I just wanted to send you a, an email, but I've recorded you a quick video. Bang. And it, the video there is just embedded into the email. Oh, so, well, there's something called Loom, L-O-O-M. No, this is faster than Loom. Right. I've been having trouble with Loom. No. I'm paying for it, and they're not, hel they're not helping me very much. No. Um, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who just come back from your coffee, would you type in one thing that you found useful so far or something that perhaps uh, you'd forgotten that uh, you think, ah, Kintish has reminded me of X. So um, any, any other ones might come up. Um, Kathy's saying people being reliable, such an important point. And yet what I found is a lot of people don't do what they say. Yeah. They will because they're too busy. They do what they say they will because they're too busy. Uh, who said that? Kathy. Kathy. As far as I'm concerned, and this is a big one for me, it's never ever about I haven't got enough time. It's never ever I'm too busy. It's always, always, always about priority. Yeah, no, At this agree. moment, I'd rather do that than that. Would you agree with me? Yeah, I agree 100%, but it's amazing how people do say they're too busy. We are all busy. But of as course. You know, if you promise somebody that you'll do something, you need to do it. Kathy, if God forbid I got a phone call that one of my kids was in an accident, God forbid, or something like that, you lot would come second and I'd be off to go and make sure that everything was all right. So in my opinion, it's always about reliability. That's my thinking. Okay, I think the seven minutes are up, Mike. Do you feel as though everybody's come back? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll mute everybody, but just really, just in case I mute you, 
Um, you have to be able to meet yourself again. So uh, I thought I was talking for the first five minutes, and uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, right. Where are participants? WPA, Kathy. Very good organisation. Thank you. Uh, the guy I used to deal with was very reliable. Uh, right, I've muted Kintish now because it's... <laughs> Okay, Thank you. so let's do this. Some of you will remember this because this is my piece de resistance. When I share this information with people, nobody ever, ever forgets what I've told them because after they've heard me and they go to a networking event, they think, ah, Everything he's told me is correct. So, most of us, and I include myself here, most of us have got a particular fear when it comes to walking into the room. Will you be kind enough and share with us all, and I don't need to know names, Mike, unless people are happy, answer that question. One or two of your top fears when walking into that room. Please type something in the chat box. And if somebody on our workshop today has got no fears or concerns, please type that in as well. Right, getting no, won't know anyone, won't know anyone. Um, not knowing anyone. Hope there'll be somebody I know there. Um, Maxine loves Lara. Um, <laughs> um, no one's talking. Because she doesn't have any fear. <laughs> That's my mantra. No fear. <laughs> and uh, I've put, been landed with somebody boring. Okay. All right. Thank you. So over the years, those are the top 10 fears, and uh, um, most of which again are covered. So let me help you let me help you overcome some of those fears the next two slides for those of you who have never seen me before i'm going to change your life and people laugh and snigger at this point but honestly from now on when you walk into that room you will see it completely differently this is the basics of being kintished as mike said at the beginning but first of all I want you, to, uh, by the way, that wasn't the slide I was referring to. The first thing I want you to be thinking about is that as you walk into the room, I want you to think that, are you a nice person? As long as you're a nice person, you've got a bit of a chance of building relationships. That one, because I work with so many, I do lots in universities and business schools and young and work with young professionals. Their big fear is that people aren't going to take me seriously because I'm too young, I'm too inexperienced. And I say that to them. As long as you're per courteous, polite, ask good questions, show interest in other people, you have as much right to be in the room as anybody else. And finally, this one. A Dale Carnegie quote. If you want to be the most interesting person in the room, remember this, what Dale Carnegie said, round about 90 years ago, and it is totally relevant today. The most interesting people we ever meet are those who are most interested in us. So always remember, it's about them. However, if you do meet the boring person who never asks you about you, I've got an answer for that as well, which comes up a little bit later. Mike, in the particip participants, will you just click on that uh, window? Along the bottom, does it say yes, no, hands up or something? I can't hear you, Mike. You're muted. Yes, it does. It says okay. yes. It says yes, uh, yes, no. 
Right, okay, that's fine. I I'm going to be using that in a few minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, apart from physical preparation of where is it, how am I going to get there, what am I going to dress, what am I going to get out of it, think about that. For those of you who find it a bit nerve-wracking, always remember that. So we go into the room and we have to meet somebody. We have to go up to them. We have to say something. My strong advice, even if it is a business event, don't ever start off with what do you do. Always start off with something that you've got in common with the people in that room at that moment on that day. So if we're all invited, I don't know, to a to a chamber of commerce event, it might be, oh, hello there, nice to meet you. Are you a member of the chamber? On the right-hand side is, how was your journey today? Where have you traveled from? The big one for me I always use, if it's a conference or similar, what made you come to the event? What are you hoping to get out of it? And then the fourth one is the venue. Isn't this a magnificent room? Have you been to this hotel before? Whatever it is, something in common to get the show on the road. Business always comes second. Small talk and chit chat, casual talk should always be the opener when it comes to relationship building, in my opinion. Now, these are the two slides that are gonna change your lives. Every room you've ever been in and every room you're ever gonna go into for the rest of your lives is always formatted in exactly the same way. That is an absolute fact. Watch the colors. If anybody is red, green, color blind, will you put it in the chat box? Because I might have to explain to you a bit different. Uh, by the way, red, green, color blind, it only happens to men. Women do not do red, green, color blind. I believe there's quite a percentage of men who have red, green, color blind. Okay, let me explain. When you walk into a room, you will see the individual. You will see couples standing in open format in a V-shape. You will see couples standing in closed format. You will see open threes. I call it the quasal. You will see closed threes, triangle. And then you will get groups of four or more. You will never, ever see any more than those six groups. Now, some of you might say, but Will, I might see an open five. Well, if you see an open five, one, two, three, four, five, this person here, oops, and this person here can't be in the same conversation. If you see a five or a six, what you're going to see is two threes or a three and a two. So when you walk into the room from now on, I want you to observe and analyze the room because I don't have to say to you that joining red formatted groups where you don't know anybody is probably not a great idea because their body language is saying, we're okay at the moment, thank you, don't come and join us. Now the following piece of information is about 80% accurate. Men, we generally stand in green or open format, women, you generally stand in closed format. One of the key reasons is women have got a much wider field of vision than men. So we men, if we can only see that far, we don't want to stand facing the person we're talking to. We like to keep an open stance. Whereas a woman can be looking at you directly but also see what's going on behind you. There's a lot more to this open and closed for the purpose of this conversation, take my word that most of the time when women are talking to us, whether it's another man or another woman, they will be facing you. They find it very uncomfortable not doing so. Whereas we men talking to another man face to face, if we don't know them that well, we find it uncomfortable. So let's go into this a little deeper. A lot of you have said to me in the fears and concerns, I don't know anybody. Well, do you know what? That is fabulous, fabulous piece of information for me. We don't want to be going to events where we know everybody. Don't get me wrong. If you go to an event and you know people, go and talk to them first. But 
the whole objective is to expand our net, reinforce our network, but also to expand our network. Now, I'm just going to go back a slide. You see our little friend here, the one in the blue suit? He looks nervous, doesn't he, like a lot of you. This is the best advice I can give you. Get there early. When you get there early, you are immediately in command and control of your own destiny. Walking into a room with it is full like that, I find very difficult. So I always, always, always plan my diary, plan my day, so that I'm there 10 minutes before the formal start. And that way I feel comfortable. So think about that, everybody. If you find working a room or going into the room uncomfortable and having to face that scene, why put yourself through the pain and heartache of doing it? You don't need to with just a bit of diary planning. Now, the person on their own. Again, let me go back. The person on their own. That one and that one. I bet you've all been that person, haven't you? Well, think about it. It's a bit of a waste of time. From now on, for the rest of your lives, I don't want you to be the person standing against the wall. I want you to be the person that goes up to the person against the wall. So please remember that. I want you to go up to the person and my... I call it my hors d'oeuvre, not my icebreaker, my hors d'oeuvre is, oh, hello there, can I introduce myself? Hello there, please may I join you? Or very often I will go up to someone and say, hello there, my name's Will. I off Although I sometimes use the reverse James Bond, I also use my very friendly uh, greeting, hello, my name's Will, and Laura will say, oh, hello, I'm Laura. And at that point, you have to be listening. It's nothing to do with your memory, it's to do with your hearing. So repeat their name and put it in your head and think about Laura Croft, you know, Superwoman or something like that. All right, Laura. So try and associate something, the, their name with something. So if I meet a Mike, I'm thinking he must be a singer. You know, Mike, you got it. So those people are the best people to approach. But go in slowly. They're nervous, they're vulnerable, and they don't know anybody. Don't worry, Mike said, one of my big fears is getting stuck with a boring village idiot. I'll show you how to deal with him or her in a moment. Message to women. Your natural default, as I've already told you, is to keep it closed. So I don't need to ever say to the men, keep it open, because we do it naturally. But I do say to the women, unless you particularly want a, uh, nobody to come and join you, because of course people won't join you in a closed format, you need to think about it and keep it open. Open three. And when I see three people in an open format, I actually imagine in my head there's a welcome mat. And the way I do it, I go up to them, I stand there, they always stop talking. What I want you to do is give all three of them eye contact and say, please, may I, I hope you don't think I'm being rude, please may I join you. And if, if this is true, say this, please may I join you, I don't know anyone here tonight. 99.9% .9 of people are kind and will welcome you in. But if you try and break into a closed group and you don't get a warm welcome, well, forgive me, it's probably your fault. So it's all about reading the body language. Read the body language carefully. And don't, once you go into that group, make sure they keep control of the conversation and make sure that they introduce themselves and then the conversation starts. And very often, Three people have probably had enough of each other anyway, and one often drifts off and you start the conversation all over again. So please, don't be the cartoon characters. Get into groups, go and join groups. By the way, 
there are two occasions when I want you to join a red formatted group. One is if ever you are hosting an event. It's your duty and your responsibility to join a closed group and say, hi everybody, can I introduce myself? My name's Mike, I'm one of your hosts tonight. Can I get anyone a drink? Can I introduce myself? Or the other occasion I want you to break into a group is if there's somebody there you know. You go up to the person you know and say, uh, hi Laura, it's Will, can I, can I join you? And Laura turns around and says, oh, hi Will, come in and uh, hopefully she will introduce you to the people there. If she doesn't introduce you, do you know why? She's forgotten their names. Well, if you want to make a friend for life from Laura, here's your script. Laura, can I introduce myself? At which point she says, thank you, Lord. If you hate Laura and you want to get revenge on her, here's your script. Laura, would you like to introduce me to these nice people? That is a terrible, terrible, cruel thing to do. So everybody remember, if you want people to continue to like you, don't use the second bit of the script. Now, the hanger on, the people that Mike always seems to get um, a lot. How do we deal with them? Well, first of all, remember this. When the conversation dries up, both of you realize, both of you are thinking, how the heck do I get out of here? Well, let me give you some tactics. You can do it the not nice way, or you can do it the nice way. The not nice way is, I call it the dumb. Well, it's nice to have met you, Mike. Will you excuse me? It's nice to have met you, I'm going to the toilet. It's nice to have met you, I'm going to get a drink. That's called dumping them. You're basically saying to them, well, do you know what? There are far more interesting people here than you, so I'm off. I would rather you didn't do that. Unless, unless, ladies and gentlemen, they have been rude to you. And what is the textbook way of people being rude to you? It's this. They start looking round and you can just sense they don't want to talk to you. Well, when that happens, you dump them. You say, well, Mike, it's nice to have met you, enjoy the event, and off you go. Because their body language has said to you, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And you think, fine, I'll take the lead, and off you go. But generally, if you're meeting nice people and you want to get rid of them, my advice is to offer them an option. I'm going for a drink. Would you like to join me? Oh, or I've seen my friend Laura over there. Can I introduce you? That's called parking them. I would suggest to you that nine times out of 10, when you offer people an option, they won't take it up because they want to get rid of you like you want to get rid of them. But what happens if you get stuck with somebody? They're a bit shy. They don't know anybody. And you have exuded this great confidence. What do we do then? Big drum roll. Are you ready? We go hunting in pairs. We take them with us. I'll say, Laura, shall we go meet some others? <clears throat> Look for an open two or an open three. Go and join them and say, hi, please may we join you. So you've created an open two into a closed four. You hang around for a bit and then you leave Laura in that group and off you go. So please, everybody. It's all about courtesy. It's all about good manners. Unfortunately, I can't see your body language. I can only see Laura and Mike. But I want to say this to you, and I don't know how you're going to react. There's a lady who died in 2014 called Maya Angelou, very, uh, very famous American poet, author. And she said this not long before she died. As I look back over my life, I've often forgotten what people said to me, and I've forgotten what people did to me, but I never forgot how people made me feel. And that is my big message to you. This networking stuff is nothing to do with business. It's to do with a relationship. And when people feel that you've done them down in any way, guess what? They won't like you, and nothing's ever going to happen. Okay, let's move on. If you are going to introduce one person to another, 
make sure that you don't just say, oh, Mike, this is Lara. Lara, this is Mike, and then walk off. Make sure you do a proper introduction. Oh, hi, Lara. Good to see you again. I've just met Mike tonight, and he's the best accountant in Eastbourne. Uh, and Lara, uh, I've known Lara for 30 years now, and she does help. I don't know what you do, Lara. Lara does whatever she does. And you get them talking. You, you, Lara you does help. marketing. Lara does marketing. <laughs> and Lara does marketing. You told me you were looking for more clients, Mike. Um, uh, perhaps you two ought to have a conversation and you, and you put them together. And then at that point, you can either stay. It's not necessary to run off. But if you do want to run off because you've got those two talking, you say, well, I'll leave you to it and, and off you go. I've got good news and bad news about rude people. The seven billion of us on this planet, and guess what? There's only 10 rude people. That's the good news. The bad news is one of them appears at every event we go to, and you have to deal with them. So remember this. If they're being rude to you, if they're being impolite, they're, they perhaps had too much to drink and are saying inappropriate things, or they start looking round, then just move on, say, well, enjoy the rest of the event, and off you go. Please remember that. We are going to meet them, but there's only a tiny, tiny percentage of them. Okay. So how about a quick, well, uh, Mike, let's do a survey, please. Uh, in the yes, no box, in the participation, who would like a seven minute coffee break? Uh, it's um, simple majority counts. If you don't want a break, we'll keep going. The next session, everybody, is all about questioning and the follow up. So can you put a yes, no? Do you want a coffee break or a no? You want me to carry on? What have we got, Mike? It's, yeah, I think it's keep going. Okay. Yep. For those of you who want to get a coffee, you can, you're going to miss the first few minutes of, of this bit. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. When we went to school, we were judged on the quality of our answers. In the world I'm talking about, relationship building we are judged on the quality of our questions. So let's go through and think about the sort of questions we should be asking. The first piece of advice I want to give you about questioning is as follows. When you ask a question, and for you it is an important question, I don't just want you to be listening, I want you to look at people very carefully. We can all lie with our words, but we can't all lie with our tone of voice and our body language. So, for example, if somebody says to you, how's business? By the way, I hate that question. I'm going to give you a much better question than this. But if somebody says to you, how's business? And they go like this. Yeah, we're really busy. We're doing well. In spite of uh, COVID-19, we're doing quite well, thanks. Yes. You can probably tell from their body language that their words and the truth are not congruent. So look at people, and particularly on screen, make sure that you are watching the way they are reacting to your questioning. You all know about open and closed questions. If you meet what I call a high react, a, a low reactor, somebody doesn't want to talk much, make sure you're asking good open questions with the who, what, why, where, which, when, and how rather than do you, can you, are you? Because if you ask of the low reactor, do you this or can you that or have you this, they can just say yes or no. And again, it's all about looking at them. It's all about, are they a high reactor who wants to share everything with you? Or are they a low reactor who doesn't want to tell you anything? So again, the eyes have it. Hijacking. Well, you understand interrupting and you understand answering in advance. Some of you might not know what hijacking is. Uh, I do it occasionally and I bet you do it. Let me give you an example of hijacking. I might say to Mike, Mike, where did you go on your holidays recently? And Mike says to me, oh, I went to Italy. 
So I start to hide. You went to Italy, Mike. You know, I went to Italy last year, Mike. We went to Rome. We had the most wonderful time. You know, the drivers are crazy over there. So he's told me one thing and I've hijacked the conversation. Try and avoid that. If I say to Mike, where was your last holiday? He said, I went to Italy. For goodness sake, ask him a load of questions. Where did you go? Who did you go with? How was the weather? And then say, oh, by the way, oh, we went to Rome last year. And then tell them about your experience. And it's so easy to hijack a conversation, avoid it. Ted. Super Ted. Say hi, Ted. Ted is very important. Why? Again, it may be relevant for you, I don't know. But I know a lot, a lot of young professional people do not ask enough questions. Why not? Because they're nervous, they might get an answer they don't understand. So, they don't ask a question, or they're, they're, they're embarrassed, or they think, I'm going to make a fool of myself. And I say to you, and I say to everybody, if somebody says something to you and you don't understand, don't back out, get stuck in with the three-letter acronym. The T stands for, tell me what you mean about that. The E stands for, sorry, I don't understand that. Can you explain to me exactly how that works? And the D stands for describe. So always remember to take Ted with you. You don't have to take him with you because if you take Ted with you like that, they'll think you're an idiot. But do think about the acronym TED in conversations because that way you're going to show that you're genuinely interested, you're going to learn something, and you don't need to worry about making a fool of yourself because you're flattering the other person. Say, you know more about this, so tell me, explain to me. Describe to me. Everybody got Ted? I'm going to put him back in his box now. Ah, this is my Kintish's four question rule. I bet over the years you've met people, you go up to them at an event or wherever it is, and you ask them questions all about them, and they never ask you anything about you. Well, I've decided this. I asked somebody at an event or wherever I am. I mean, I'm one of those very annoying people on an aeroplane who likes to chat or on a train. I will ask somebody three or four questions. If they don't start asking me back about me, uh, if, if I'm at an event, I will dump them because they don't want to talk to me, in which case I'll go fine. So think about whether you're happy just to keep asking questions. And the problem is, if you ask too many questions of the lone reactor, you know what it's called? It's called an interrogation, and that's the last thing we want. So always be mindful that a conversation has to have an ebb and a flow. We've talked about asking the icebreaker question. I hope you remember that. When we start asking people questions about their business or their career, I would suggest that you break your questioning down into three sections as shown on the screen. So questions about the present. So what do you do? If they say, I work at such a company, always make sure that your next question is, and what is your role there? Because when you understand what their role is, you can direct your questions accordingly to what they actually do. And I said to you a few moments ago, I hate that question, how's business? Ugh. When people say, how's business? I think, do you mean now, today, this week, this year, uh, uh, this month? Ask what I call trendy questions. And when I say trendy questions, questions with a trend. How's the year been going for you so far? At the beginning of a year, how's the year started for you? Towards the end of the year, how's the year gone for you? Or, of course, in our present situation, how has COVID affected you since March? So ask what I think, hopefully, are sensible questions because you want a sensible answer. Ask them what their marketplace is. Ask them where they're based. 
maybe ask them the name of their company. Ask them questions like personal questions. Do they enjoy the job? I used to have a question that said, so what keeps you awake at night? That's a negative. Try this one. So what are you focused on at the moment? That's more of a positive. Remember this. Everybody I'm talking to, Mike, I hope, in our audience, have got a product or service that is valuable to their clients. Can I have a nod to that? Thank you. So what you are looking for is to match your product or, or service to their problem, to their challenge. So it's all about asking them about them. And if you're getting on well with them and thinking, so if I meet somebody who is a senior person of a big company, because I, when I do my in-house workshops, I need about 20, 25 people who need to learn to network. So um, I, I like to know the size and scale. And that's something else you want to know. You want to know how big the company is. So you can't say, what do you turn over? But you can say, how many people work in your company? And again, that gives you a good indication of size and scale. So if I'm enjoying somebody's company and I'm thinking, oh, fair size company here, director, I start asking questions about the past. How long has the company been going? What made you become an accountant? How, if you meet anybody who owns their own business, we all love this question, don't we? How did you get started in that? And then questions for the future. And again, put a time scale on it. Oh, sorry. Put a time scale on it. Where do you see your business going in the next year or two? Don't say what plans have you got for the future. Again, forgive me, stupid question. So ask questions that have got a time limit on them. Where do you see the business going in the next 12 months? Not five years. With the way life is at the moment, there's so much uncertainty. Five years is like, well, forever. So be disciplined in the way in which you ask your questions. So we've done icebreaker questions. We've done business questions. Let's talk about small talk questions now. What you see there is my famous cartoon, only famous because about 125,322 people have seen it. That is an image of various topics of small talk. So using my exciting clicker, let's go through it. I want you to imagine that's you. And you get out of your car, I get out of your red car. The red car is a symbol for your icebreaker question. How is your journey today? Where have you traveled from? What are you hoping to get out of it? We look across the road at our neighbor's house. So of course the house is questions about where they live, where they used to live. So if I meet people with unusual accents, if any of you Southern based people come to Manchester with your Southern based grass and bath, I would probably say to you, obviously you're not from Manchester. Do you live here now or are you just um, uh, visiting? Balanced on the top of the neighbor's house is the business card. We've talked about questions about their business. Flying through the business is an aeroplane. Questions about business travel and about holidays. Anybody remember holidays? On the end of the wings, we've got tennis rackets. Questions about sport, interests, what they do. One of the best questions I think you should be asking to really build rapport is, so when you don't come to conferences, what do you do in your spare time? On the end of the wings, we have the tennis rackets. We look in the cockpit. On the pilot seat, we see an open newspaper, current events. Can I strongly recommend that you never, ever initiate a conversation about politics or religion? And then finally, if we look behind the pilot seat, we see our neighbor's family. Ladies and gentlemen, family is a fabulous topic but when you ask the wrong person the wrong question on the wrong day it can cause a lot of upset so can i respectfully suggest that you never ever ask are you married or have you got children how do i find out whether you're married and whether you've got children it's very easy 
I say to you, what was your last holiday or what do you do in your spare time? Because when people have got partners, husbands, wives or children, they presumably go on holiday with them or they do uh, outside interests with them. So ask, quest oops. ask questions about aeroplanes and tennis rackets rather than are you married and have you got children? Now, as we're doing well for time, I want you to put in the chat box, what do you do when you're not working? What's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite interest? Mike, let's look out for them. There could be some interesting ones here. I'll have a drink of uh, gin and tonic while I'm waiting. Any answers, Mike? Um, yoga. Yep. I mean, a windsurfing. Yep. Mountain biking. Yep. Walking the dogs. Yep. Emily's riding a horse. Of course. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the tennis racket symbol is a really useful one to build rapport. Uh, until we went into lockdown, I was a very keen hiker. Um, used to go once or twice a month hiking, go to the gym. But do you know what? Since lockdown, Mrs. Kintish, to whom I've been married for 50 years at Christmas, she's become a fitness fanatic. She's not here. She's she actually still working, which is great because she's the only uh, income earner in my house at the moment, mainly. Um, she drags me out every day, rain, hail or shine, we do a three to four mile walk every day. So when I finish here today, straight after lunch, we'll be out into the park. We've got two fabulous areas within five minute walk where uh, we can get our exercise. And by the way, a number of people say to me, I go walking, Will, but I've not lost any weight. Well, Trudy, my wife and I have lost weight. Why? Because we, we don't amble. We walk quickly. We, we've now do a mile under 18 minutes and in other words it's power walking because that way your metabolic rate is moving around if you just somebody who said i walk the dog i might be wrong but i don't think you lose weight walking the dog doing you no harm but you're not really exercising the dog's probably getting more exercise than you uh, that's what I'm guessing. If somebody wishes to argue my point, please put it in the chat box and Mike, you, uh, you will report to me. You so talking up, of family... You walk up our hill, Will. I'm sorry? You walk up our hill and you'll just find it's metabolic. Okay, well, if you, well, that's it. I don't care. You go slowly up the hill as long as it's a hill. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's my family. Mrs. Kintish looks good, doesn't she, after 50 years? She hasn't painted a hair either. That's my daughter, Joanne, math teacher, my son, Michael Kintish. If you want to hear his music, go onto YouTube, type in uh, Mike Kintish 15 minutes and you'll hear his song. It was a hit. Thank goodness he got a, he made some money out of that. Gave him a nice deposit to put on a house in London. That's me. Uh, that's Anthony, my property developer son. So that's my family. And they have produced seven lovely grandchildren for me. And if we had time, I'd go through their names. I often use that as a test to see if I'm still, um, uh, if my memory still works, but I think it does. So those are my grandchildren. So we've asked loads of questions. We might have spotted an aha moment. So we have to follow up. Well, how do we follow up? Most people I think are networking criminals. If ever you spot an opportunity at an event, and you don't follow up. Can I ask you, why did you go? Was it for the food or drink? In which case you're not a networker, you're a net drinker or a net eater. So whenever you spot an aha moment, please, I want you to follow up. In good old days, we swap business cards. And when it comes to business cards, the most important thing about a business card is to ask for theirs. Because if you're going to follow something up, you need to get all their details. There's my business card. Look, my phone numbers, my email, my websites, 
uh, my address and so on. So always be thinking about getting their business card and there's a whole process that I'm not going to go in but I will give you some advice after this course. I don't know why the, the pink, uh, I don't know why I keep getting blank screens. If anybody can help me with that at some stage, please let me know. Um, if you are going to follow something up, again, follow up with a phone call. And I'm very proud of this slide, everybody. This is what I call my generation slide. For older people in the room like Mike, and maybe one or two others, picking up the phone, that is a reminisce of picking up the phone. Modern day picking up the phone is that. So whichever way you do it, please pick up the phone. What I am gonna send you uh, by 12 o'clock today, is a tips booklet. It's a total guide how to follow up, what you're going to say, how to deal with business cards, what happens if they say this, you're going to say that. And I do hope you find it valuable. We haven't got time to talk about follow up today. Mike, maybe one day you'll invite me back and we'll do a whole uh, session on follow up. And when we do follow up things, we often send a proposal to somebody and we get silence. Well, what does silence mean? Do they want our services or not? The answer is we don't know. People are always very busy or we are not priority. So I will follow up a prospect three times. These are not cold call prospects. These are people I've met at events or people have phoned me and asked me for a quote for some training or for a conference. And I will keep following up. And how do I ensure that I don't become annoying? How do I ensure that I don't pester people? Well, as it shows there, I offer the escape route. So on my third email, I say, look, I'm beginning to think I'm pestering you. Please give me guidance. If you don't want to hear from me anymore, tell me and I won't bother you any further. And that way, people cannot accuse you of pestering them because you've said to them tell me to get lost are you ready for this everyone we don't like hearing no but no is the second best answer after yes it's the bit in the middle that we don't like the silence the uncertainty there's nothing worse in life in any aspect of life than not knowing so please always follow up until you get a yes or you get a no. And you know what? No, more often than not, never means no, never. It means not yet. And I'll tell you when it means no, never, going right back to the beginning, it means when they don't like you, they'll never do business with you. And that's why the like, in my opinion, is the key to what I'm talking about today. For those of you who don't like following up, who have what we call, oh, I'm having my first senior moment of the day, um, imposter syndrome. Well, I'm not sure I'm, not, I'm that good. Do they really want me? Remember this. And Mike has said to me before, you have all got a great service or product to offer. Remember this. By following them up, you are giving them a gift. You're giving them a gift of your knowledge, your expertise and your experience. I hope, like me, you're gonna charge them that fee and the value they're gonna get from you is that. So by not following them up, you are doing a disservice. So bear that in mind, everybody. You're following up to add value, to help them, to support them, to solve a problem that, that they've suggested to you that they have got. I'm being silent now because I hope all of you are take. for those of you who are networking criminals, I hope you're taking that bit in. And at the end of the day, we want to meet people. Sometimes uh, the moment we might have to meet them through the camera and when we can go back to networking properly we can go and meet them like that 
So let me remind you of the process. It's all based on numbers, you know. Mike's an accountant, I'm still a chartered accountant, non-practicing. It's all based on numbers. Because the more invitations you accept, the more people you meet, the more relationships you build, the more questions you ask, the more needs you spot, the more aha moments, etc. The more business opportunities there are. But it's all based on the invitation. If you've got children and they can read and they're about from about the age of 11 upwards, can I strongly recommend that you buy them that book? If they only read one self-help book in their life, buy them How to Win Friends and Influence People. And let's focus just for a moment. He wrote, that book was written 1936. 1936. What's that, Mike? 84 years, 85 years ago. That was the first book on networking. A lot of the principles of that book is what I've learned and what I've used for the last 20 years in my presenting and training because that's what we're trying to do in summary have a read i'm going to read it for you and again remember guys it's nothing to do with how clever you are, what a brilliant accountant you are. It's all about, hey, I like this person. I can work with this person. I feel comfortable. Oops, you can, can't see my head. I would love you to join me on LinkedIn, but please read that. Read that. Anybody notice the important word there? I bet a lot of you get invitations from strangers and you don't know who the heck they are. Well, if you're going to invite me and I'd love to hear from you, will you please send me a personal invitation? So I, I was on the X5 seminar today and uh, can we link in? Always send a personal invitation. And for those of you who are linked in to me, you'd be doing me a massive favor. If you like this stuff today, would you do a tiny little post on LinkedIn with a link to my name uh, so the world knows that you enjoyed the course? Oh, there it is again. Spoiler alert. How do I earn my money? Of course, can't do any of that at the moment. But if you know anyone who wants some training, we only had an hour and a half today. I did a workshop the other day where there's a lot more interactive, where we went into breakout rooms uh, because it was two and a half hours, three hours. But because we only had an hour and a half today, I, I use the chat box. And I do have an online learning program, which is COVID covered. And there's a whole section on how to network online. Oh, and I had my book published few years ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you like to just type in the box, what's the one thing you've learnt? And anybody who's typed in the box, I'm going to send you my little pocketbook and the follow-up tip booklet. So I really would be grateful. We still have a couple of, well, it's going to be a few moments over, but please everybody, be ever so kind and type in the box, what's your big aha moment in the last hour and a half, because that's how long we've been here. What have you learned? And the other thing I'd like to hear from you, did you like the fact that I was standing up rather than sitting down? Uh, I'm going to sit down for the last few minutes. Any answers, Mike? Um, recognizing if they closed. thought it was crap, I don't want to hear their names, by the way. No, rec recognizing open and closed groups, yeah. con conversation. Um, remember to be careful not to hijack conversation. Um, and reinforce the need to be reliable and not over promise. 
Um, how to interpret groups when entering a room. Standing up is good, by the way, Martin thinks. Thank you, Martin. Uh, will you put it, go to the participants? Who thinks, uh, put a yes if you think it's better to be standing up or no if you don't think it's good. So in the, in the uh, yes all, or no box. All saying yes. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, well, do you want to open it? So as I bring this to an end, everybody, it's so easy just to sit around and hope that things come back to normal. And I, I feel as though you'll agree with me that it's never going to go back to normal. There's always going to be a hybrid from now on of face-to-face -face versus and uh, online networking. If you agree with me, will you put a yes or a no? There's always going to be the two from now on. Anybody think otherwise? I must admit I agree with you entirely, Will. Okay. All right. We can't do that. So just the last few moments, everybody. We can't do that. Maybe some of you, I mean, this is a networking club that you have here, Mike. Is that right? It's both. I think any meeting is a networking club. Of course it is. But for some of you who want to raise your profile, consider joining other networking clubs. But at the end of the day, the way you're really going to build relationships is one-to-ones. Now, I don't know whether you encourage that, Mike. Uh, we've got to be careful with GDPR. Uh, by the way, if I'm going to send you all an email because I have your email addresses. If you do not want to hear from me ever again, there's my email address, willatkintish.co.uk. Uh, please write to me immediately and say, Will, I don't want to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll, and, and I'm assuming, are you all okay for me to put you on my email newsletter list? If not, please tell me. But please, arrange one-to-ones. I must have had 80 one-to-ones in the last three or four months. Just catching up with people, uh, because I'm, a, as you can imagine, the thought of my oxygen is this and my oxygen is having coffee with people. I can't have coffee in the coffee shop. Well, we can now, I think. But it, a lot of it has been virtual coffees. So, Mike, thank you for inviting me. Thank you all for your time. It's your turn now to go and do things. So. Thank you, Will. I'm going to come off. Has anyone got? I've stopped sharing my screen. That's great, Will. I think, as you say, the whole business about uh, no like, and trust. And I think we all like to do that. Several people apologize. They had to uh, leave for, I mean, this, um, just as a matter of interest for people, we're going to go back to our eight o'clock start um, again, now that we're coming out of lockdown. So that, uh, cause some people are arranging other meetings and are finding that they're having to uh, go off. So, Whereas it's starting at nine now, we're going to go back to starting at eight. Um, or, now, what I'm interested in is, um, I'll, I'll email you separately, but uh, we don't normally have an August meeting, but because people aren't, most people are not going to be traveling anywhere, we can have an August meeting, but I'll, um, I'll do it if uh, people want it. So um, I'll write to you separately on that. But I think the most important thing, Will, is that you're saying that every, every meeting is a networking meeting. And I, I find the most frustrating thing is when people are so intent on uh, sticking a uh, business card in your hand. Whereas I always remember the message, and I don't think it came out today, or I missed it from you, is the uh, the whole point of networking is never putting your thrusting your card in people's hands. Is actually asking people for their cards and trying to be helpful. And I always that's always stuck with me. So that's as another way of being interested in other people. Mike. You go to an event and within 13 seconds, people are thrusting their card at you. And it's like saying, now this is me. You want to know all about me, don't you? And I'm thinking, I want to get to know you, not your business card. So you're 100% right. Uh, well, thanks, Will. I think that's great. I think we've all enjoyed it. As I said to everybody, you have your own inimitable style that uh, we've come to know and love. And so you haven't, you haven't let us down. So we'd love to uh, have you back. So if you are prepared to uh, share some of the old guard I've got loads of ideas, so that's fantastic. So thank you very much. I'll uh, put you. I'll put this up uh, onto the uh, 
um, the website. I'll put it on uh, either YouTube or wherever. Um, give you send you a link to it, and I'll encourage everybody to um, go onto LinkedIn and give you a positive endorsement. Um, so, uh, uh, Mike, I, I'd like you to send me the recording if you can. You'll have to send it on We Transfer. And what I'd like to do, if because I, I I can edit it, is take little sections out and use for my marketing. Fine. Would you mind? No problem at all. That's very good. I hope you all enjoyed it, everybody. We trainers have got um, have got a big responsibility. I've taken an hour and a half out of your lives. Well, if you thought it was no good, I've wasted that because that's the one thing we can't replace. We can replace money, but we can't replace time. So um, thank you for staying on. And uh, go back through those level one contacts and think, I must phone Jack or I must call Jill. Can I have a, a thumbs up if that's what you're going to do today? Thank you. Thanks, Will. Bye, Thanks everyone. Thank you, everybody. Much. And have, a, have a great July. And see, see you. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know whether we're going to do one in August. Bye for now. I'll be in touch, Will. Bye now. Yeah. Thank you.